Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today we're going to talk about what might be the most productive bait in all of freshwater fishing. This is a lure that has caught them for hundreds of years and is yet still potentially the most underused bait when we start looking at the lures that are being used in today's angling society. So we're going to break this down. I want to share with you a couple of my personal experiences, as well as just kind of break down why I think it might be the best bait that's ever been created for all species out there. Now, before I do get into this, though, I want to remind you, if you're looking for additional content from me, check out my members only page. Also, if you want to support the channel and you're looking to purchase some tackle maybe around this holiday season and you're going to do it at tacklewarehouse.com please use my tackle warehouse affiliate it's a really good way to show your support for the channel and the little bit that i make from that comes right back into making content for everyone out there uh, but to those of you that are using it thank you very much it is very very much appreciated all right so let's talk a little bit about this bait you know for me I think back to when I was a child, there were a handful of baits that really directed me into the bass fishing realm. You know, when I was younger, I did a little bit of everything. Caught a bunch of carp using crawlers off the bank, uh, caught a bunch of, you know, bass on the old Berkeley power worm. I really did a little bit of everything, but there's a handful of baits that kind of directed me into the direction of where I'm at now. One of those the Berkeley Power Worm, seven inch power worm, motor oil color, uh, tequila sunrise. Those were really popular for me as a kid. The Lazy Ike was another one that I used like a topwater bait. I would just twitch it on the surface. Small floating Rapalas. Again, I kind of just twitched them on the surface. Uh, caught a ton of bass using that. I'm talking the little smallest size ones. Uh, the Mr. Twister, just a single uh, single tail grub. I would cast that out and straight retrieve it and catch a pile of fish on it. And then there was the inline spinner. So I used to throw a pile of little MEP spinners, little blue fox spinners. Uh, I didn't necessarily throw like the rooster tail, but I know the rooster tail is a real popular one. For me, it was MEPs or it was the blue fox. You know, growing up in northern Illinois, fishing either in Wisconsin or northern Indiana. MEPS was kind of king. They're made up here in Wisconsin. So that's what I was used to. You walked into every bait shop and there'd be a wall full of MEPS spinners from tiny to monster size. And for me, I was all about throwing a MEPS or that little blue fox. And generally speaking, I started off throwing the smallest sizes, size zero, size one. We're talking little inch and a half, two inch size baits. And what I loved about them was that not only did I catch bass, but I'd catch a pile of perch and bluegill and crappie, maybe occasionally a pike or a small muskie. It was a very versatile bait for me. Then I remember going to a, uh, it was a biology class trip in college. It was my freshman year of college, or I should say it was the summer between freshman and sophomore year. We actually went out and did a two week course out in Wyoming. And during that trip, we were allowed to do a lot of trout fishing. And one of the baits that they told us to bring before we went on that trip was a bunch of inline spinners. So I went into my tackle box, grabbed a bunch of my inline spinners, brought them with, caught a pile of uh, trout doing that as well. And then kind of towards the end of college, I really started getting into musky fishing. And for me, musky fishing was very much just throwing big bucktails, which are oversized inline spinners. So I've kind of gone the gamut my entire life of throwing the smallest of inline spinners to the biggest of inline spinners. But I got to tell you, once I started getting into the bass tournament world, which was, you know, my last couple of years in college. And then after that, the inline spinner really kind of just disappeared from my arsenal. And it did that for a while until uh, probably I'd say 10 years ago when I started fishing, kind of going back to my roots and fishing a lot of small streams. And for whatever reason, I just started throwing those small inline spinners again, because 
that just is what I did when I was younger and it brought back those memories. But what I quickly found out was how much I was missing the boat in terms of my tournament world as well by not throwing them. Uh, you know, I've done videos on these guys before. Like, so this is the MEPS bronze slammer. They come in a bunch of different sizes. You know, in the videos that I've done, it re really showed how versatile it is in terms of catching various species, big smallmouth, nice pike. Uh, you know, I think in that video, I may have caught a walleye, maybe I caught a dogfish, catches everything. But that was one of those videos that actually opened up my eyes because before that event or before that video or the tournament that I was going to after that video was on Lake Champlain. And I remember thinking, I need to start burning these for smallmouth as well. So I, I went to Lake Champlain and one of the first things I did in practice was burn the bronze slammer over uh, some shallow flats and quickly went to catching fish just like I've done everywhere else I've ever thrown an inline spinner. Now in that tournament, I didn't, I didn't find the right quality fish on those shallow flats. I ended up catching my fish deeper in that event, but it just opened up my eyes again to how good the inline spinner is to the point where now, like if you go down uh, to Florida and places like that, one of the baits that you see a lot of people throwing is a weedless inline spinner. So this is the Smart Mouth by Picasso. And I've just got a Berkeley, uh, the uh, Power Stinger on the back. But the, you know, the reality is like a Snagless Sally has been a great bait down in that part of the world for a long period of time. And that's just a weedless inline spinner as well. So when you're talking about the versatility of the inline spinners, it's pretty eye-opening to me how important this bait is to like our fishing history. It's probably one of the first baits that's ever been developed. So we know it's got the longevity of time. But at the same time, when you look at the fish species out there that we target, your trout species, your tiny, you know, smallest of panfish species, bass, walleye, pike, all the way up to big, you know, musky, your inline spinners are one of the best, most productive baits that's ever been created. So for me, I'm starting to really recognize the value of like the smart mouth and your inline weedless spinners to present a bait profile that has worked so well for over a hundred years. Uh, and bring it back into areas where I know nobody else is throwing it. I don't know why nobody else is throwing it, but the reality is these things still catch fish and very few people are throwing them unless you're kind of in the trout world. I think a lot of people still do it there. And if you're in the musky world, a lot of people throw still, still throw your big bucktails. But there's a big gap in the bass fishing world. Uh, so if you're looking to catch fish, maybe you've got a young child or uh, you've got some inexperienced anglers, put on some small sizes. So this is a size three. I'm talking smaller than this, your smallest size inline spinners. They will catch fish. They will catch all kinds of fish. Uh, and as you kind of graduate more into the tournament world, or if you're looking to catch maybe bigger size fish, you go up a little bit, say to the size three here, uh, and you'll catch better quality fish, you'll weed out a bunch of those smaller fish, but you're still gonna catch a pile of fish. And then if you're looking to move up into the big game world, you can pick up your MEPS killers or whatever big bucktail it is that you like to throw and chase toothy critters. The point here is I really feel like inline spinners are potentially the most underused bait in all of fishing today, but yet, still potentially the most productive lure that has ever been made in fishing. Just my thoughts. I'd love to hear from you guys as well what you think on the subject, but I'm telling you, if you're not throwing inline spinners, regardless of level of angler that you are, you're missing out. It is something you should try to pick up. Um, just really good, really good bait from tiny little spinners to big spinners they all catch fish and they will help you become a better angler and catch more fish on the water. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate 
all of you out there that continue to support the channel. If you like today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.